Okay friends, good morning and welcome to this class of plate tectonics. If you remember the last class, we are talking about there are three types of spreading ridges depending upon the rate of spreading. We have fast spreading ridge, slow spreading ridge and ultra slow spreading ridge. In between there are intermediate depending upon its velocity and the rate of spreading. So, we need a magma chamber to supply magma to this mediocenic ridge rip system. And uh, as we discussed earlier, the magma chamber is permanent at the fast spreading ridge and at the slow spreading ridge there is no permanent magma chamber exist and there will be supply of magma from this uh, crustal or the lower crustal boundary or this upper mantle boundary and this magma is distributed among these dikes and few of these dikes they become the conduit for this magmatic supply to this ocean ridge basaltic system. So, that is why this magma chamber properties that to be understood where this magma chamber lies permanently and how the magma is collected there and that collected magma how it is supplied to this upper surface that has to be understood. Apart from that whether all these oceanic boundaries that is the mid oceanic ridge system are magma dominated or there is something else which is depending upon the rate of spreading we will discuss in today's class. So, if you see this mid oceanic ridges they are the planet's largest magmatic system. We have different magmatic system like volcanoes in terms of uh, the subduction zone and we have volcanoes at the hot spots and apart from that their contribution is negligible as compared to this magmatic supply or magmatic eruption along the mid oceanic ridge. Particularly the fast spreading ridges they contribute larger magmatic system to this planet earth as compared to this other magmatic supply system like this volcanoes at the subduction zone and at the hot spots and at the convergent boundaries. So, the divergent plate boundaries magma is generated by decompressional melting. So, what is decompressional melting? If you see this diagram here we have this temperature increasing in this way and we have pressure increasing in this way that is the depth increasing. And here if you see this black line this is indicating the dry mantle rock that is begins to melt that, that is solidus. That means in this way all these rocks are solid and this is the line which is denoting this is the liquidus or it is said the melting is complete. So, beyond this line all these rocks they are in the molten format. So, we have solidus and we have liquidus and in between this the region that is called partial melting. Partial melting means partly the rocks are in the melt form and partly in the solid form. Why it is partial melting? Because we know from the Bowen's reaction series that this different rocks they form at different temperature. So, similarly once we are providing temperature that is why different minerals they will come to melt form at different temperature. So, a rock composition of X they may composed of minerals X1, X2, X3 like that. So, that means different minerals they melt at different temperatures that is why the melting starts from here that means those minerals which melt at low temperature and pressure they will start melting here and finally here if you are moving at this point those minerals which will melt that is melting temperature at high pressure and temperature and gradually the melting continues the solid proportion gradually decreases and once it is reaching here. So, that means the complete rock is converted to molten format and that is the liquidus. So, now decompressional melting it says decompression means we are reducing pressure. 
So suppose a rock mass which is here, now we are reducing pressure. That means in the pressure axis we are moving up. So we are reaching here. And once we are reaching here, we are cross cutting the solidus here. So that means with cross cutting the solidus, the rock starts melting. But mind it, here the temperature remain constant. So keeping the temperature constant, we are reducing the pressure and finally we are reaching the solidus and we are coming to this partial melting field. So that is why the rocks started melting at this point. So at the mediocenic ridge system, this decompressional melting is the dominant process or the primary process of melting. Apart from that, there are other two melting phenomena. One is the heat induced melting that is caused by increasing of temperature. For example, suppose we are remaining the pressure constant and once we are increasing the temperature. Here we are remaining the pressure constant and we are increasing the temperature. So still rocks are melting. So pressure decreasing or temperature increasing. So that is why the rock can melt and it is solidus format to come to the partial melting format and finally it is the liquidus format. And the third type of melting that is called flux melting caused by adding volatile. So here neither the pressure nor the temperature act major rule rather the flux melting that is adding of volatile. Mostly this type of melting it is confined at the convergent boundary where this uh, one plate is subducting down and it is reaching at the asthenosphere. So due to high heat the volatiles which are trapped within the sediment within this rock within this minerals they are released and due to release of this volatile it reduces the melting point. So that means here it is changing the goal post that means either the pressure is not a capable and the temperature is not capable. So that is why this volatile we are adding so that the goal post it changes that means it is reducing the melting point. So that is why the shifting of this solidus and liquidus to this way. So that is why this type of volatile addition melting it is dominant at the convergent plate margin at the asthenospheric system. Now once the melt is generated either it is the the upper mantle or it is the lower crustal level. The melt once it is generated, it is a low density as compared to the surrounding rock mass. So that is why the melt try to push itself up. So that is why it ascends through this upper mantle and the lower crust and collected beneath the ridge axis and it is the elongate melt lens is formed. So if you see this cross section of this uh, mediocenic grid system, we are getting a melt lens here, but it is a cross section. But if you see, if you imagine the whole lithospheric system below this mediocenic ridge, so that means it is an elongated system. So just it is a cross section you are looking here. So that is why this mediocenic ridge system, this magma which is generating at the lower crustal and the upper mantle level, it is coming and aligning itself along this mediocenic ridge system magma chamber. So at fast spreading ridge, suppose the East Pacific rise, this decompression is faster than cooling because we have frequent magmatic supply. We have continuous or near continuous magmatic supply. One phase of magmatic supply there, then another phase of magmatic supply is there. So they are just overlapping. So that is why it is getting less time to cool. So that is why here the decompression melting is faster than the cooling system. However, if you are moving to this slow spreading ridges like the mid-Atlantic ridge or Indian Ocean ridge system, here cooling dominates over decompression because this magmatic supply, the frequency is very less. So one set of magmatic supply or one pulse of magmatic supply is there, then the magma cool down its system is solidified, then the another phase of magma supply is there. So the, here the temperature or the cooling is dominating over decompression. However, at the fast spreading ridge where this decompression is faster than the cooling because due to frequent magmatic supply, it is getting less time to cool down. Now this plate spreading is accommodated by episodic faulting and this magma injection into dike and some of the dikes they behave as a conduit 
to supply this magma from subsurface to the surface and it form finally the pillow basalt. So, if you see here this figure, we have a melt lens and this magma chamber is here and we have this dikes and these dikes are aligned parallel to this ridge axis, this is the ridge axis and few of the dikes they are moving to the top of the surface and finally, they are pouring magma here and creating this uh, pillow basalt. And this geometry of this magmatic system, dynamics of the sea floor eruption, lava geochemistry and the ridge morphology are among the host ridges that is properties controlled by the rate of magma supply which in turn it is controlled by the spreading rate. So, that means if you remember our earlier class when we are talking about this uh, mid oceanic ridge system, its geomorphology, its geology and its geophysics and its gravity, all those things they were controlled by the spreading rate. So, that is why this morphology of this mid oceanic ridge, then the geochemistry of this magma and this ridge properties, it is totally controlled by the rate of magmatic supply and the rate of magmatic supply it is proportionate to this rate of spreading. So, high rate of spreading like the East Pacific rise, it is magmatic supply is high and low spreading ridge like the mid Atlantic ridge and this Indian Ocean ridge here the magmatic supply is raised. So, that is why its geochemistry is different, its geomorphology is different, its mineralogy component is different and its geophysics is different. So, that is why all total it is governed by the spreading rate. Now, there are different models of formation of magma chamber. Somewhere there are fossilized magma chamber, mostly you can find along this uh, ophiolite sequence and some of these precambrian terrains where this mid oceanic ridge they are lying idle. So, in that area you can study this magma chamber and mostly this magma chamber properties they are studied by laboratory experiment by artificial creation of magma chamber and artificial reducing temperature and pressure then mineral composition that different minerals are formed at different levels. So, that means different models has been proposed. So, this models all these models they show the formation of oceanic lithosphere normally requires a magma chamber beneath the ridge axis. So, either this is a fast spreading ridge or it is slow spreading ridge, but we need a magma chamber. Somewhere it is a permanent, somewhere it is a temporary. And from this magma chamber, magma erupts and intrudes at the lava flow, which is if you remember, it is representing by layer 2 after the layer 1, which is the sediment layer. Layer 2, it is the pillow basalt and layer 3, it is the seated dike complex. So, this layer 2 and layer 3 are representing this magmatic supply from this magma chamber in form of dikes, seals and in forms of pillow basalt lava. So, this is the oceanic ridge plumbing system. That means, the oceanic ridge magma is plumbed above. So, this plumbing system that is the piping system, this magma supply system is means that the fast spreading ridge magma is the dominant material added uh, to make new crust and then typically it is the ophiolite sequence. However, if you go to the slow spreading ridge, here the magmatic supply is less. So, that is why asthenosphere may rise to the surface without any magmatic crust forming that is serpentinite crust. So, if you remember in the earlier class, we have uh, discussed about this uh, slow spreading ridge which are generally characterized by low angle normal fault, high stretching. So, once it is a low angle normal fault we are creating and we are stretching this lithospheric system. So, that is why the mantle moves up and once the mantle moves up, it interacts with the water which is percolating through the fractures and many of this region or much of this region and this mid oceanic ridge system at the slow spreading ridge, they are serpentinized due to alteration. So, that is why this magmatic supply is dominant or the magmatic crust is dominant at the fast spreading ridge, whereas the slow spreading ridge is dominated by metamorphic or the altered lithospheric system. If you see here this figure, 
we have this slow spreading grid system. Now you see how the crust is thin and it is close to this asthenospheric system or the close to the mantle system. That is why there is a rise of the mantle system and due to this water percolation here we are getting this alteration zone and this alteration product of basalt it is converted to serpentinite. So, that is why this zone is serpentinite rich zone. However, if you see here this magma is supplied at a faster rate we have different dikes and different seals are there. So, this is magma dominated mediocenic ridge. Here it is metamorphic dominated mediocenic ridge. And the oceanic crust at the slow spreading ridge is thus it is called the axiomed mantle because once upon a time this was lying at a higher depth and due to depressurization, due to releasing of the overburden, due to thinning of this crustal system, this pressure due to this mantle pressure it is coming upward and that is why it is called exhumed mantle. And the exhumed mantle it is characterized by high degree of metamorphism and alteration that is the serpentinite formation. So, in consequence of this that is the fast spreading ridge, the crustal structure is dominated by the magma and volcanics. Whereas, slow spreading and very slow spreading ridge where faulting and stretching is dominant allowing examination of this asthenosphere. If you see this figures there are different models proposed by different author from year 1998 to 2014 and all of these models that says there is a creeping lower crust below the upper crust and everywhere if you see this upper crust is getting thinned from away from this mediocenic system towards the mediocenic system. So, if you see here we have a crustal thickness of this much here and we have a crustal thickness of this much here. Similarly, here it is this much and here it is this much. So, that means every model it is takes into account about the crustal thickness around this mediocenic ridge particularly the slow spreading ridges and all of them shows that this mantle material it is coming up near to the surface and finally, with the interaction of this oceanic water they are serpentinized and that is why it is exhumed system and the metamorphic system. Now, any departure from this general observation or the experimental procedures. So, that means any departure from that pattern happens where there is other influence such as the mental plumes. For example, we know that is the mid Atlantic ridge, it is a slow spreading ridge. So, that means we believe the slow spreading ridge we should find here this exhumed mantle that is the serpentinized and it is a thin crust it is there and the serpentinized system is there metamorphosis system is there. But if you see here suppose we are adding some mantle plume. So, that means the crustal thickness is increased. So, now you see at this the mid Atlantic ridge passing through Iceland and here this is the crustal thickness. The crustal thickness says in this region the crust is much thicker and here the crust is much thinner. So, this crust is much thinner it is expected here crust is much thinner it is expected because it is a slow spreading ridge. This crustal thickness is very less and it is stretched and this exhumed mantle is expected. But in between if you see here we are getting the thickest crust. So, why such deviation is there? So, this departure from this general assumption or general observation is due to the addition of mantle plume. So, now we are stretching and the mantle plume it is supporting this magmatic supply. So, that means due to this magmatic supply here we are getting thicker crust and we know the rate of spreading is slow. So, that means we are supplying magma below and we are not able to spread it. So, that is why thicker crust is expected. So, in Iceland the magmatic production is high compared to the spreading rate leading to the unusually thick crust. So, this unusually thick crust is due to the addition of this mantle plume. Now, the magma plumbic system at a mediocenic ridge starts with an area of partial melting and generation of migration, generation and migration within this rising asthenosphere. So, it starts partial melting at a point because 
this depressurization is there. So, due to depressurization somewhere it has to start. So, there are different points this partial melting starts and due to this starting of the partial melting the magma started generating and with time this magma they are coalescent to each other, they are added with each other and finally a magmatic plume is generated and this magmatic plume it comes up to the surface through the dikes and sometimes it may reach to the surface and sometimes it remain in the dike form or in the seal format. So, when enough magma is collected, it can move upward as a body, magmatic body. So, through buoyancy force and may erupt at or cool at the surface or it may continue rise as a dike and it may feed into the magmatic chamber. So, that is why this partial melting points are here and here they are distributed and this magmas are generated and this magma finally they meet each other and forming a magmatic body and this magmatic body it rises up either it is remained as a magma chamber just below or it may fed by dikes and some of the dikes they remain below this crustal system and some of the dikes are exposed and they are producing magmas here. So, if you see this diagram diagrammatic representation of the here this magmatic supply is there and this magma they are flowing as if like this alluvial fence at the mountain fronts. So, here you will get this pillow basalt and this pillow basalt of different forms, different size they are generated and representing the crustal system. And the thickness and the extent of the oceanic crust relate to the melt flux and the spreading rate such that at slow spreading ridges some crust will be composed of serpentinized mantle whereas the fast spreading ridge the crust would be extremely built on the plumbing system or this magmatic system that we have already discussed here this fast spreading ridge they are dominated by magmatic lithosphere or magmatic crust whereas the slow spreading ridge they are dominated by serpentinized or exhumed crust. And along a mid oceanic ridge, magma collects into discrete centers, each of which concentrates magma at distribute it towards or outwards by a plumbing system that is called dikes and seals. So, that means so far we are talking about the dikes or the seated dike complex, but it is not necessarily always it will be in the dike format. There may be any format, so that may be seals and that may be dikes and this orientation of dike may be like this, it is radiating from the system. So, that is why there are different shape and size rocks or this intrusive rocks they are formed at the mediocenic ridge system. Therefore, the intrusive complex can be considered to extend from the axial magma chamber throughout the entire plate making up the largest intrusive system on the earth. So, there are different intrusive systems, we have different regions where intrusions or magmatic intrusions are there, but this mid oceanic ridge system they are representing the largest intruding system on the world. So, two type of plumbing system occur at the mid oceanic ridge system. The first type, so the central intrusive system with cone sheet intrusions and dike swarms where more dikes remain below 2 kilometer depth and very less are exposed to the surface. A majority of dikes do not reach to the surface that is the old ice land system. If you see here majority of dikes they are remaining at the depth. But the other type of system that the complex photonic sequence of coarse gabbros that translations up to seal and dikes and finally into lavas representing typical fast spreading mid oceanic ridge system. So, with the fast spreading mid oceanic ridge system the magma much of this magma that is extruded that is poured on the surface. However, at the slow spreading ridges mostly this magma the dikes they remain below the surface and few of these dikes they become this conduit and become this plumbing system and they expose the magma or they 
it is that is the extrusion of the magma there to the surface. And if you see this uh, magma chamber and uh, here this is the mediocenic ridge system and we have a lensoidal magma chamber is there and within that this magmas are separated. And here suppose we have a, a transform fault. So, at this transform fault region this magmatic supply is less. Whereas, once you move away from this ridge system that is the uh, transform fault region this magmatic supply again increases. So, along one segment of mediocenic ridge there may be one or more axial magma chambers and this axial magma chamber may be separated by this rock mass itself or may be separated by the fault system where the magma is stored before it is intruded vertically and laterally along the ridge axis. So, magma chamber is a lens shaped body and mostly molten rock it rests within that and extend below the fast bedding ridge systems. The chambers sit atop of the reservoir typically of the melted rock that we have already discussed. So, this is a melt lens is there. So, lens shaped magmatic chamber is there. And the chamber and the reservoir are small and poorly supplied with molten rock near a discontinuity that is the transform fault that we have already discussed once we have a transform fault that means here the magmatic supply will be less and here the, the, this transform fault the magmatic supply will be less. But the number of magma chamber is related to the split motion rate, length of the ridge segment and this magma supply to the ridge. So, how much a magma chamber length would be? What should be its extension should be? So, that depends upon this the relative plate motion rate and the length of this ridge segment and the magma supply that is the rate of magma supply to the ridge. All these three parameters they define what should be the magma chamber properties at the mediocenic ridge system. So, magma chambers are viewed as a composite structure comprising of a outer transition zone made up of a hot mostly solidified crust with small amounts of interstitial melt and an inner zone of crystal mass with sufficient melts for it to behave as a very viscous fluid system. Now, if you see here we have a transition zone that is the outer transition zone and we have inner system that is called crystal mass. So, this is the magmatic lens is here and from this lens due to magmatic differentiation we have crystal system and the crystal system they are just floating within that magma and are settling down to this magma chamber. A melt lens only develops at the fast bedding ridges where there is a sufficiently high rate of magma supply for it to persist at the top of this moss zone. So, this melt lens whatever it is shown in this figure that is only and only present at the fast spreading ridge. And the slow spreading ridge there is no permanent melt lens in lenses there. So, there will be magmatic supply and there will be distribution. So, there will be no permanent melt lens exist here. And these magmatic systems have been well imaged geophysically and geologically mapped on the ophiolites and this is the tertiary lava piles of Iceland. The gabbroic lower crust accounting for this 5 kilometer crust thickness and layer 3 from this lateral flow and cooling at the edge of this magmatic bodies. So, the upper mantle is composed of this ultramorphic rock peridotite and this boundary between the layer 3 and 4 that is the moho defined both petrological and seismically. So, this petrological moho is there and seismically moho is there. So, that means it is depending upon the density of the system. So, with time the rock alters and their density changes. So, that is why this petrological moho and this seismic moho they changes themselves. So, that is why this magma chambers they are a complex thing. So, within that there are magmatic supply at different rates at different places and this length of this magmatic system that is magma chamber that depends upon the rate of this magma supply and this spreading rate 
and the length of this uh, segment of this uh, mediocenic ridge system. Now, seismic refraction over the East Pacific rise shows a slightly thinner crust than the main ocean body and it is a anomalously low upper mantle velocity layer beneath the crust and that low velocity layer extends up to a depth of about 100 kilometer. So, now if you see this uh, velocity layer here, this velocity scale is there and uh, this East Pacific rise that is showing a low velocity zone at the mid oceanic ridge system and this low velocity zone at depth wise it is varying about 100 kilometer depth. Then why this low velocity zone is present below this ridge axis? So, this can be explained in these three format. One is the thermal expansion. So, thermal expansion that means we have a high temperature zone, we have molten rock. So, this due to this high temperature, the surrounding rocks are expanded thermally. So, the upper mantle material beneath this ridge crest that is followed by this contraction at sea floor that is spreading that carries it laterally away from the source of the heat. And the presence of molten material, what is the anomalous mantle? We have molten material, obviously this P velocity will be decrease. Then there is a phase transition. This phase transition that is mineralogy transition. Once we have a high temperature and surrounding is a low temperature, so obviously there is a phase transition. So these three possible reasons, one is the thermal expansion, second is the molten material presence and third is the mineralogy transition or the phase transition, they may be these three best possible explanation for this low velocity zone along this mid ridge system. So, thank you very much. We will meet in the next class.